Alzheimer's disease is the commonest form of dementia and for some time there's been an intensive search for a test to diagnose it in the early stages. Some people are touting brain scans to diagnose dementia. But are these scans reliable? Yes, yeah, so there are aspects of imaging such as structural imaging, imaging of the hippocampus for example, as well as functional imaging, as well as other biomarkers in cerebrospinal fluid and blood to indicate who is at highest risk for progressing from normal cognitive aging to mild cognitive impairment or from mild cognitive impairment to Alzheimer's disease. Um, one of those is called FDG-PET, which looks at energy usage, glucose use in the brain, and there are various other kinds. One of the major kinds of imaging that's now being used in Alzheimer's disease is amyloid imaging to look at the amyloid, beta amyloid in the brain, which is associated with the plaques. So you can look at the brain as a whole or special parts of it to see whether they're small, large, absent, or the wrong shape. And then there are other scans which take pictures of the brain in action and can even detect the substance which seems to gum up the brain in Alzheimer's. It's called amyloid. And funnily enough, amyloid scans are probably best at reassuring you that you don't have Alzheimer's. They can rule in, for example, certain aspects of Alzheimer's disease. If you use magnetic resonance imaging, and there are, for example, changes in the area of the brain called the hippocampus, which is associated with memory. If there's hippocampal shrinkage, then that gives additional suggestive evidence that this is Alzheimer's disease. Or if there's no amyloid on the basis of these PET uh, diagnostic imaging methodologies, then that suggests that it's not Alzheimer's disease. But none of these by themselves can be used as a diagnosis. But there are people with amyloid in their brains who don't have Alzheimer's and never will. There are people who are cognitively normal who have amyloid in their brains based upon this amyloid imaging. It's not clear what the prognosis is for these people. And there are studies that are going on currently to follow these people to see if in fact amyloid imaging puts the, the presence of amyloid, uh, measured by amyloid imaging, puts them at increased risk of developing either mild cognitive impairment or Alzheimer's disease. From your overview then of the work that's going on in this area, if somebody wants to have a test to see whether or not their thinking and memory ability is early Alzheimer's disease, does that technology exist at the moment? I don't think by itself that technology exists. There are tests that can suggest that some individual's memory is changing over time. I think the critical aspect of this is what happens over time. So one test at one point in time is not really diagnosis, diagnostic. However, if somebody is changing over time, if somebody has a very good memory, you know, can balance his or her checkbook, can plan to do things, and that changes over time, then that's very suggestive that there is a problem, and that problem may involve Alzheimer's disease. The question is though, why would you want to know you've got early Alzheimer's disease when there's no effective treatment? Well, it's because there could be another explanation altogether for problems with thinking and memory, what's called cognitive impairment. So cognitive impairment can result from a number of different things. It can, be, it can result from dementias, such as Alzheimer's disease, Parkinson's disease, frontotemporal dementia. Um, but it can also result from something like depression or taking too many, in, uh, too many drugs can result for, in cognitive problems. So it is important to parse out what the cognitive impairment is the result of. Some of these may be treatable, some of them may not be treatable at this point, but it's important to know. So in fact, you could become less scared by having the right tests. Yes, yeah, so you may be taking too many drugs and that's what's producing these aspects of cognitive impairment. And if the physician knows this, he or she may be able to reduce the number of drugs and this may help you. 
It may not, but at least that's one of the treatable aspects of cognitive impairment.